This week we're taking a look uh, back at Galatians chapter 2. We had a sermon on that uh, this past week. We're just going to take a little different look, a little deeper dive into part of chapter 2. It's a pretty amazing chapter, really. Uh, Paul is talking about going back to um, Jerusalem 14 years after first going there to be with the leaders. And he's going to confirm that the gospel he's preaching is one they approve of as well. Um, not that he's really worried about the approval of man. He, he, he emphasizes he's not. But he wants to know that we're all on the same team, that he's not wasting his time dealing with uh, some of these issues with some of these people. And the whole concept of Galatians is that Paul has planted these churches with simply the gospel. That, that we're sinners in need of a Savior. Jesus is the only one that can save us. It's through Him we're saved. We can't save ourselves by works. We can't save ourselves by belonging to the right church, by belonging to the right heritage, by having the right last name, by doing the right things, avoiding the wrong things. The only way we can be saved is through Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel. And that's how he started the church. But then some different leaders came along, some people they would call Judaizers, uh, came along and began to try to teach a different message. They added to the gospel. It was Jesus plus getting circumcised by con and converting to Judaism. It was Jesus plus keeping these rules and these regulations. And Paul said, no, no, don't leave behind the gospel I've told you. Become unchanged, set free from these, uh, these legalistic things, these religion uh, things. And so we start seeing that cycle happen over and over, and it still happens today, where people say, well, Jesus saves, but you also have to do this, or you have to belong to this, or you have to believe this. And ultimately, we start adding things to the gospel. And Paul uh, didn't like that, and he wanted to deal with that. And so he was talking about this, and he used an example of the apostle Peter. Peter, great man of God. Jesus obviously used him, but he wasn't perfect. Uh, he, he was flawed like you and I. And one of the instances that we read about uh, comes from Luke chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 11. But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face for what he did was wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterward, with, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of the criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers became or followed Peter's hypocrisy, and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. And so Paul calls him out on it, and we see that Peter changed and comes, comes back around and realizes flow because what happened was he was eating with them. He believed the gospel. He was eating with the, the Gentile believers, the uncircumcised believers. But then when some of the legalistic leaders came, he worried a lot about what they thought about, and so he stopped eating with the Gentiles. And Paul saw this and heard this, and he called him out on it. And it's just very interesting to see here that he was willing to do that. Because I wonder sometimes if we're willing to confront for the sake of the gospel. We need to be willing to do that in a loving way. But what I want to dial in here in just the last minute or so of this devotion is thinking about what Peter did here. Peter treated people differently because he was worried about what others would think. And I often wonder, how do we treat people who are different than us? Do we truly love everybody? Or do we sometimes pick and choose how we treat people? And I think we can become like Peter was there, where we neglect certain people because maybe the way they look or the way they act or the way they believe or how different they are from us, when the gospel is very clear that God loves everybody and we're to love everybody. In fact, the only way to change this world is one person at a time, by loving people. And so we don't want to ever become a people that start focusing on the wrong things. We want to love everybody the best we can. So let's make sure that we do that this week. And we see that Paul is absolutely adamant that we understand that Jesus is the only way. It's not Jesus plus something else. And the way to show people Jesus is loving them one at a time. Have a great week.